Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday the 12th of October. India launches Operation Ajay to bring back Indian nationals from Israel. India and China hold military level talks on border issues. An Afghanistan earthquake, a disaster on top of a disaster, says WFP. And now for all the details, India on Wednesday launched Operation Ajay to facilitate the return of Indian nationals who wish to return amid the ongoing war between Israel and Hamas. Taking to microblogging site X, Foreign Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar said special charter flights and other arrangements were being put in place for the rescue. As per the Indian Embassy in Israel, the first lot of Indian nationals will depart for India on Thursday. Other registered Indian nationals will follow the subsequent flights, the statement from the Indian mission added. Around 18,000 Indian nationals are currently present in Israel, including students, traders and caregivers. Israel and the Palestine-based terror group Hamas have been engaged in war since Saturday after the terror outfit conducted deadly incursion in Israeli territory. There have been more than 1,200 casualties so far on both sides. The ferry flight is expected to reach today um, later in the evening and then hopefully they'll pick up passengers and come back tomorrow morning. Uh, we expect, I think it can carry about 230-odd uh, passengers. That's what we're hoping can fill it up, but depending. Look, this number is broad. We have all the options that we need to use. For now, there are four charter flights. But as we said, we have also taken our assistance in the old cities. So for now, we are taking our charter flights. But I won't do the rule out. India and China on Wednesday concluded the 20th round of core commander level talks as part of the ongoing efforts to resolve tension along the LAC, the de facto border between both countries. In a statement, India's foreign ministry said the two sides exchanged views in an open and constructive manner for an early and mutually acceptable resolution of the pending issues between both countries. They agreed to maintain dialogue through military and diplomatic channels along with peace and tranquility on the ground, the statement said. Relations between New Delhi and Beijing have soured since 2020 when armies of both the countries clashed in India's Galwan Valley. India has maintained normalcy in bilateral relations can only return when China starts adhering to past agreements. At least four people were killed and more than 100 injured as the Delhi to Kamakya Northeast Express derailed in India's eastern Bihar on Wednesday night. The 21 coaches of the train derailed at the railway station in Baksar district. Rescue workers were immediately deployed at the site and the injured were rushed to the hospital. Restoration work at the site was underway till the last reports came in. Union Railways Minister Ashwini Vaishnav in a post on X offered condolences and asserted the root cause of the derailment would be found out soon. The accident came just over four months after the horrific triple train tragedy that took place in Odisha's Balasore in June which claimed 296 lives. <laughs> खबर मिली मैं नौकरशिया में पहुंचा ही था इधर से और मैं वहीं से बैक कर गया और वहां लगातार मैंने रेल मंत्री से लेकर के एनडीआरएफ और तमाम एसडीआरएफ सबको खबर किया मूविंग ऑन देयर हैज बीन ग्रोइंग अनरेस्ट इन पीओके ओवर इन्फ्लेशन अनफेयर टैक्सेस एंड क्रैक डाउन ऑन पीपल एक्सप्रेसिंग देयर डिसेंट और रिपोर्ट Scores of local women and lawyers in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir held a protest outside the Central Press Club in Muzaffarabad city against oppression and a range of issues, including inflated electricity bills and denial of basic amenities. The protesters also expressed solidarity with those arrested for speaking out against the government's policies, highlighting the harsh crackdown launched against dissenters.
یہ کہاں کا انصاف ہے کہ کوئی شخص اپنا حق مانگتا ہو تو آپ اس کے خلاف ایف آئی آر ایں درج کریں اس کے گھروں کی اوپر چھاپے ماریں اور کے بچوں کو پیروں کے نیچے رون کر جائیں یہ کہاں کی سیاست ہے یہ کہاں کا انصاف ہے یہ کہاں کی حکمرانی ہے جتنے بھی حکمران ہیں وہ کان کھول کر سن لیں ہماری پورا من جد و جہد اپنے جائز حقوق کے لیے ہے اپنے وسائل پر اپنے حق کو تسلیم کرنے کے لیے ہے ہماری جد و جہد کسی مقصد کے لیے نہیں ہے ہم یہ چاہ رہے ہیں کہ ہمارے جو جائز مطالبات ہیں ہمیں آٹا فرام کیا جائے سستی بجلی فرام کیا جائے ہمارے وسائل سے بننے والی بجلی ہمیں فرام کی جائے کیا یہ باتیں کرنا کیا اپنے حقوق کے لیے آواز پلان کرنا گناہ ہے The occupied region has witnessed numerous protests in recent months with grievances ranging from wheat flour shortages to exorbitant electricity prices. Locals lament they have long endured discrimination and second-class treatment. The World Food Programme has called the recent earthquakes in Afghanistan a disaster on top of a disaster and urged the international community to provide humanitarian aid to the war-torn nation. Limited aid has made relief work difficult after earthquakes and aftershocks since Saturday rattled Herat province, killing more than 4,000 people. The WFP is initially providing each family of seven with 2,100 kilocalories a day for a month and may consider other forms of aid like cash in the coming weeks. What we need to see in Afghanistan, this is a disaster on top of a disaster on top of a disaster on top of a disaster. Currently, we have 15 million people who do not know where their next meal will come from. And the World Food Program is only able to support 3 million people due to a massive funding shortfall. So we're really calling on the international community to support the Afghan people, stand in solidarity, and also support the World Food Program. Meanwhile, Afghanistan's healthcare system, reliant almost entirely on foreign aid, has faced crippling cuts in the two years since the Taliban took over and much international assistance, which had formed the backbone of the economy, was halted. Moving on, Sri Lanka's finance ministry in a statement on Thursday said that the country has reached an agreement with the Export-Import Bank of China to cover about $4.2 billion of the island nation's outstanding debt. China is Sri Lanka's largest bilateral creditor, owing about $7 billion. Sri Lanka started negotiating with its bondholders and key bilateral creditors, including China, Japan and India, last September, parallel to moving forward on a $2.9 billion bailout from the IMF. The creditors broadly share a common understanding on the main conditions for a debt restructuring, but have yet to iron out some technical issues. The IMF's latest disbursement may face delays after the lender's first review of the loan found a revenue shortfall. The scenic villages along the line of control between India and Pakistan are now witnessing developments and alluring tourists thanks to the renewal of ceasefire agreement between the two sides in 2021. Take a look. Residents of villages along the border in India's Jammu and Kashmir have expressed happiness over the ceasefire between India and Pakistan, which has ushered in development in the region since it was agreed upon in 2021. Amid a peaceful atmosphere, a number of developmental projects, including roads, banks, proper electricity, networking and new food points for visitors have been established. The region is also witnessing an influx of tourists. बहुत ज़्यादा डेवलपमेंट हुई है यहाँ पे कंस्ट्रक्शन के काफ़ी काम हुए हैं और काफ़ी चीज़ें हैं लोगों के इंटरेस्ट पहले यहाँ पे जो यंगस्टर्स थे पढ़ाई की तरफ इतना इंटरेस्ट नहीं होता था लोगों को बिकॉज यहाँ पे वो माहौल नहीं था यहाँ पे वो डेवलपमेंट नहीं थी यहाँ पे वैसा एक माहौल नहीं बना था बट आफ्टर टू और रिसेंट टाइम्स में काफ़ी चेंजेज आई हैं हमारी सोच में यंगस्टर्स जो यहाँ पर हैं जो बच्चे हैं वो अब कुछ बनना चाहते हैं कुछ करना चाहते हैं सीज फेयर में बहुत अच्छा है लोग आते हैं टूरिस्ट आते हैं यहाँ के लोगों को टूरिस्ट आने से रुखार मिलेगा तो इसलिए हम यही दोनों मुल्कों से ये गुजारिश करते हैं कि जितना ये सीज फैल पूरा जिंदगी रहे तो हमारे लोग तरक्की पे रहेंगे और इधर अच्छा डेवलपमेंट होगा
Karen, which happens to be the last village of the border area in Kupwara district, was hit badly during 30 years of turmoil, with people facing tough times due to the cross-border shelling. But it has also now turned out to be a tourism hub. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.